there's a heaviness. I mean, that the, the Lint Cafe incident that I mentioned a few years ago, that also still lingers. All of these attack, uh, uh, major Western capitals such as London or Paris or whatever have gone through their own iterations of this. When I was out, again, this is all within, you know, it's, it's a, a very um, picturesque area of Sydney. It's really the glitziest and so on. So mm -hmm. around, there's all these little bays near Bondi Junction. So I was just there and I could hear people. People are worried. They're panicked, of course. Uh, they can't believe that this is happening. It's unprecedented. We've seen it happen in other major capitals. But to see it happen live, uh, of course, it's it's a worrying thing. You worry for your safety and um, the people around you. We're breaking news this morning. A man has been shot and multiple people, including a nine-month-old baby, have reportedly been stabbed in a major incident at a shopping centre. Farid Farid is a reporter for the Australian Associated Press in Sydney and joins us now. Uh, Farid, thank you for joining us. Uh, please, could you bring us up to date with what we know so far? Well, the police, um, the state police, uh, New South Wales, are about to speak shortly on this horrific situation where we've had reports of multiple stabbings, four to six, still unconfirmed at this stage. But the nine-month-old baby that's been coming through, there's been some footage of the attacker donning a rugby league jersey, uh, green and yellow, but nothing has been confirmed so far by the authorities. Uh, but the mall is one of the biggest in Sydney, uh, one of the liveliest, and, uh, yeah, it's quite a shock to locals, including myself. Yeah. In terms of uh, the latest confirmations, we are expecting an update from New South Wales Police at any time uh, that is due. Uh, Farid, could you describe, you say it's a shock to yourself, to local people, in terms of the area, in terms of where this happened, just explain more to us about uh, what where we're talking about in Sydney. Well, for your British listeners, I'm sure they would be familiar with Bondi Beach. So this is the junction uh, where all the buses um, go to Bondi Beach, Australia's most iconic, iconic beach, arguably. Um, so the area is you know, teeming with tourists and uh, thousands of locals. But it's also, uh, others might say, and this is where the speculation comes in, it's also a heavily Jewish area, not just this area, but surrounding suburbs. It's one of the glitziest, trendiest, most glamorous suburbs. Uh, but with the mall, you know, um, everyday people are shopping there, um, from the Apple store to you know, your regular run-of-the-mill clothing stores. So um, we've been hearing that, you know, a lot of shopkeepers have stepped up and tried to aid p uh, shoppers get out of the mall quickly or to hunker down in their dressing rooms, for example. Mm -hmm. What do we know, Farid, at this point about the emergency response and how quickly police were on the scene in order to address what was unfolding? So this happened a couple of hours ago, according to New South Wales Police, and I just happened to be driving around. I have to say the response has been pretty swift in terms of SWAT teams deployed, ambulances, um, and lots of uh, police, heavy police presence on rooftops and surrounding the area of the junction. So I, I would say they were quick to it, but of course, the loss of life is horrific and, and it can't be you know, it can't be quantified at all that these things happen. You might remember a few years ago, we had a, another tragic incident also in a major thoroughfare in the centre of the city where there was a man who also shot a lot of people out in Martin Place at the Link Cafe. So, And that was declared a terrorist attack, but then later on, um, it wasn't. So it's still too early to speculate on the causes and why this is happening right now. What do we know about what is happening on the ground now? Is the situation contained, under control? What, it, what yeah. does the emergency response look like right now as we speak? I think it looks pretty controlled in terms of getting the thousands of people out of the mall um, and then for police to speak soon. 
that means that they've sort of cordoned off the area and they um, they have neutralized. There have been unconfirmed reports that they have neutralized or shot dead the attacker who was wielding a machete or a long knife. Yeah, we had that but, really confirmed from an ABC reporter we spoke to about 20 minutes ago who said that a female police officer had shot one man dead. Okay. So that that is there's been footage of that, especially on on social media. There, there's footage of that roaming. I tend to be a bit cautious as a reporter with just waiting on what New South Wales police mm. is going to give us uh, in terms of what's happening. But you know the hospitals around the area they're receiving all the victims at the moment. Um, so you know um, it's still a very fluid situation of and it's quite surreal that it's happening, you know? Yeah. Where would the nearest hospitals be? Are they far away from the shopping centre? No, nah, not far from it. About five to ten minutes away. Probably the most specialist hospital is about ten minutes away or five minutes uh, with ambulance driving. But um, the multiple deaths are just... And for this to happen at such a... You know, with all that's happening around the world, it just sort of adds to Sydney being another flashpoint of, you know, you can't shop safely anymore, even in one of the busiest shopping centres and most secure areas, really, of Sydney. That's really interesting uh, what you say about that, just that sort of atmosphere, that feeling around Sydney. Can you explain more about why why that is? I think there's a heaviness. I mean, that the, the Lint Cafe incident that I mentioned a few years ago, that also still lingers. All of these... A ta a major Western capitals such as London or Paris or whatever have gone through their own iterations of this. When I was out, again, this is all within, you know, it's it's a, a very um, picturesque area of Sydney. It's really the glitziest and so on. So mm -hmm. around, there's all these little bays near Bondi Junction. So I was just there and I could hear people. People are worried. They're panicked, of course. Uh, they can't believe that this is happening. It's unprecedented. We've seen it happen in other major capitals, but to see it happen live, uh, of course, it's it's a worrying thing. You worry for your safety and um, the people around you. Uh, let's have a listen now to some of eye, some of the eyewitnesses um, who have been speaking to TV channels in Sydney. <laughs> it's just like the worst thing ever. Like, who does that to people? Sorry. How so did you? you... Saw a guy with a machine? Yes. And then there was, I saw a woman lying on the floor in Ch Chanel, so. Um, I, I didn't see him properly, I was running. But um, it's just, it was insane. It was insanity. I wasn't expecting it. I thought I was going to die. Gosh, it's really difficult to listen to, but it just really shows the the, the terror of, of being caught up in that situation. Yeah. Um, Farid, uh, we hear there then from a couple of people who were in the shopping centre uh, at the time. Um, an ABC reporter we spoke to 20 minutes ago suggested that there were still people inside, but that was primarily because police were, were interviewing them. Uh, and actually, uh, uh, we're just... Um, confirming uh, one report that suggests that any suggestion of a second uh, attacker uh, appears to be incorrect. Police believe there was just one attacker. Uh, in the last couple of minutes, Australia's Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, has extended his sympathies to the victims. He says, I've been briefed on the devastating events at Bondi Junction. Tragically, multiple casualties have been reported and the first thoughts of all Australians are with those affected and their loved ones. Our hearts go out to those injured and we offer our thanks to those caring for them as well as our brave police and first responders. And I suppose, Farid, um, there is a question here about the kind of political response to this and whether how, how that will work. So, you know, we hear from Mr Albanese there. Uh, just talk to us about the various structures of local government, national government, and indeed uh, how they can lead at a moment like this. So we've got the state premier, which is New South Wales. Um, the premier, his name is Chris Mintz, and he just also tweeted about how he is horrified by the events of this afternoon. So police, emergency res services and first responders, he, he, of course, thanked them. So you have the state level. You also had the local council tweeting and keep, keeping people updated. And now it goes up to the federal and national level where you've had the Prime Minister, um, 
you know, pay tribute to the uh, the first responders and police, but also the casualties who have fallen. What is interesting in that just a couple of days ago, the leader of our opposition, his name is Peter Dutton, mm. formerly a police officer, but in a different state, a uh, conservative extremist leader, if you will, he criticised sharply New South Wales police a couple of uh, days ago just about their contact in, uh, in the context of keeping several communities safe. So it'd be interesting to see how he flips the script and how mm. he will now probably pay tribute to them. So it's interesting, but I think I, ha I know of police that have been deployed, a policeman, a friend of a friend who has been deployed to the scene because he was closest to the station there. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Farid, thank you very much for now. Uh, do stay with us. It's uh, good to be speaking with you uh, as we continue to report on what exactly, as we try to pin down the details and piece together what has happened in Sydney. So what we do know at the moment, there have been multiple stabbings at this shopping centre. It is the Westfield Bondi Junction at Bondi Beach in Sydney. Uh, we do understand in the last few minutes that reports of a potential second attacker is likely un incorrect. We do know, though, that a female police officer shot dead a man with a knife who had been... Um, or randomly stabbing people. We understand that one of the people who was stabbed was a nine-month-old baby. Um, there are reports, and if you want to go to the live page on the Times website, it's got lots of information there. It's well worth looking at if you've got a digital subscription. Uh, they are reporting um, a police officer who is not allowed to speak publicly, uh, but has spoken to the Sydney Morning Herald, saying four people have died, but there could be up to six fatalities, which is what they are hearing at the moment. Um, what we do know is we are expecting a police press conference in the next few minutes um, and then we will be able to bring the updates to you from that. Um, let's have a quick listen now. We are getting reports all the time in from eyewitnesses who were there at the scene. Let's have a, a listen to somebody else who was there at that shopping centre. I saw a lady open the door, a security guard, and she was waving like this. And pretty much about five seconds after that, just behind me, about five gunshots went off. So clearly people very shaken, understandably shaken at that scene uh, as reports continue to come in. It is believed now that the situation is contained, uh, but clearly hopefully we'll have more information from a police press conference in the next few minutes. Just by way of what we were reflecting there in the political response, Chris Minns, who you just heard Farid describe and talk to us about, the new South Wales Premier will return to Sydney immediately. Uh, Minns had been out of Sydney um, and had an acting Premier covering for him. The statement reads, I'm horrified to hear about the events at Bondi Junction this afternoon. I'm making immediate arrangements to return to Sydney. I want to thank New South Wales Police, Emergency Services and First Responders and the community for their bravery in the face of this shocking incident.